Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. I'm Wen Lin, a senior physicist at INQ. Thanks for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be presenting here. This whole talk is to give a preview about quantum simulation, specifically with trap ions. This talk features work when I was at University of Maryland. So let's start. So, so as a beginning, I would like to just like share my point of view about quantum computer and simulator on a higher level. That's similar but different. And I like to illustrate the subtle difference in this diagram, specifically uh, an analog quantum simulator, which I call AQS here. So an AQS is a subset of the universal quantum computer. A universal quantum computer can do what an AQS do, but not the other way around because AQS, uh, AQS is not perfect. It has errors which leads to less accurate computation, quantum computation. So this leads to another question on why do we even build AQS? So it is because uh, universal quantum computer is very challenging to be built, to have all uh, error to be as minimal as possible to get high fidelity measurements. Therefore, AQS assists to explore other fields like exciting physics to do. So we're exploring other physics, um, the development of AQ, uh, development of universal quantum computer can happen in parallel. So this is a general like overview. So what do on what do we do on quantum simulation then? So one way in quantum simulation specifically and a lot of quantum simulation is to simulate many body physics to gain insight in insight to interesting physics. There are a few platforms for quantum simulator. For example, it's this trap ion system, superconducting qubits, optical lattice, and more, more platforms. As an expert in trap ions, I'll be focusing on trap ions, the trap ion systems. So the next slide, I'm just like giving uh, all of you a few flavors of the quantum simulation topics. Hopefully it provides the motivation of for doing quantum simulation. The fir first word is about the study of how many body physics give insight to the confinement effect, prominently assist in quantum chromodynamics, which this talk will primarily focus on. And then the second flavor is about uh, a work that did by my co-workers that study about many body localization without disorder. So what we call this start MBL. And the next is like uh, we can investigate temporal fluctuation in, using the average magnetization of a non or near integral system. And finally, this on this slide is like uh, to do like quantum approximate optimization algorithm. So this this uh, algorithm can be it was done by us uh, on the analog quantum simulator to provide a test bed on this uh, QAOA scheme. So, so this is the flavors of quantum simulation. Today, I will mostly focus on the domain wall confinement, which I work uh, primarily on. So before we delve into quantum simulations, I just like give everyone just like um, how trap ions work. So it's just like uh, uh, introductions. So um, in trap ions, we use IF trap to confine ion with electric fields. So according to Unshaw, Toron, and Maxwell equation, which is this, uh, a point charge cannot be maintained in a stable stationary equilibrium with static electric field. So what does that mean? So this is illustrated in this diagram. You can see that uh, this saddle sh shape, or I can call it jokingly, a uh, Pringles potato chip shape. You can see that in this uh, electric field, you can see that this particle is confined in the x direction, but not in the y direction. So if we freeze time, the particle will fall along y direction. So how do we confine ions then? So instead we apply a time varying electric field. Therefore you can imagine this Pringles potato chip to be rotating. And then you can see that the time average will yield a bow and thus, that's how ions are trapped. Next is a simplified image of an uh, RF trap where all these circles are metal rods and we apply AC electric field on these two rods. And another 
uh, two methods grounded, and this is the the toy model on how to gener generate such electric field to confine ions. Then another image is um, this is a real ion trap that I did during my work at at New Steel, Maryland. So in this trap, we can trap like hundreds, uh, this, uh, at least one hundred ions. So. Uh, so this is the overview of ion traps, and now I'm going to delve deeper into like how the mechanism. So because we are dealing with ions and it has normal modes. So why do we have normal modes? Because the electric field, the electric potential applied in a Coulombic potential between the ion change will result in the harmonic oscillators. So what we call is the mode of the trap frequency. You can imagine this is analogous to a particle in a spring. Therefore, in a, in a linear chain, it will have three set of motional modes in the X, Y, Z direction, illustrated here, transverse here, and, and this another, another transverse is out of the image and X directions along the chain. So the total number of modes will be three times the number of ions. So this is, and next, we're going to, I'm going to explain like uh, the the atom that we use to do like quantum computation. So we at New Steel Maryland we use uh, Euterbium 171 as a qubit, and we chose the this state, this atomic state, um, two as one half, where with the mf equals zero. Like for example, this state as a spin up, and this state as a spin down. So this is our qubit. And these two states are separated by 12.6 gigahertz. So the first thing in order to do accurate quantum computer, the computing, we need to just like know how to state prep properly with the highest fidelity. So which means we need to start at a well-known state. So here how, how we do it is like we apply a scheme where it's like optical pumping. We have like all we when all the ions uh, when we started the ions can assist in any single state. So we drive a, a like 369 nanometer laser in all, all polarization. This is to ensure all the uh, population will go to the down states. With this scheme, we can achieve like a fast, fast initialization state with high fidelity. So, so that's the, the first criteria, a state prep. The next criteria is to how to read out. So the way we read out with Euterbium 171 is, um, is like we apply a resonance 369 laser. So when the ions is at this state, it will emit, uh, it will, it will, when, when the, the ions is at the spin up state, when it has this resonant light, it will scatter photons. photons. Therefore on the PMT or the photon multiplier tube, or a camera, we can see the fluorescence of from the ions. However, if the ions is a spin down state, it won't scatter any photons because this resonant light is 12.6 gigahertz away from this like scatter event. Therefore, by using this, we can have an accurate uh, state differentiation between bright and dark ions, the, the spin up and spin down. So another element to do quantum computational is to manipulate the state of ion. So we can use um, a pair of Raman lasers to do single cubic gates, like for example, to like a uh, single cubic rotation along the block sphere. And also by using the motional modes that I, I just like show, uh, that, that I described earlier, we can do entangling operation for quantum computing. These are the basics tool for qubit manipulations. And next, I'm going to just turn back to the normal mode's picture of the trap ions. In this diagram, so, so this is a frequency spectrum. So when you, when you shine the, the lasers, the carrier transition correspond to the transition between, between this like spin up and spin down. So which is different in Euterbium and differentiate, the energy difference is 12.6 gigahertz. However, due to the motional modes of ion chain, we can probe the motional mode transition, which we call the sideband transition. You can see that this is the, the, the red sideband and the blue sideband. So this correspond, the red, this, this red sideband correspond to N minus one of the harmonic oscillator. 
and this corresponds to n plus one of the harmonic oscillator. So before we move on, I just want to show, I'll give all you a flavors of like what are the possible motional modes in an ion chain. So we have like two transverse modes. Usually in a linear ion chain, the transverse mode will be uh, way larger than axial modes. And then, and then you can see that the center of mass, what we call center of mass where all the ion chain move together is the center of mass. But towards the end, we have this zigzag mode where the ions are moving like uh, in a different side, direction like this. And finally, there's an axial mode, which is, is similar to the, the, the motion is something similar, but it's along the axial direction. So um, here we are just uh, looking for an example of the sideband transition of the motion modes. So since uh, the, the ions are trapped and then can represent it as a harmonic oscillator, to probe a sideband transition, we can use a Raman laser to do this. So we apply a rich sideband transition, this like from spin down. So when a side, rich sideband transition is, is undergo, it will remove one quanta out of the harmonic oscillator and you can see in this example. So at the same time, it will apply a spin flip. So spin down, we're going to spin up. However, in the other, the motional modes uh, state, it will, the one quanta of phonon will be removed. So uh, on contrast, the blue side band works the other way around. It will flip the spin, but it will add a quanta to the harmonic oscillator. So these are the basic ingredients to do quantum simulation. And th uh, this is, I'm not going to delve deeper in this, but if anyone has other has a lot of questions about how this thing works, I'll be happy to answer uh, later. And, and with this all quantum operation, uh, by doing manipulation of laser, we can generate a long range transverse field Ising model, which is this. So, so this can be done by by using a toolbox that I described earlier. And the final Hamiltonian is just like what I call this JIJ as an interaction matrix between the spins. So this is like I is index one of the spin and this is just like a general uh, transverse uh, magnetic field. So this is the introduction of how the model. So next I'm going to just like feature about a quantum simulation experiment, which is the confinement of quasi-particle excitation. So, so now I'm going to just like show that how the transverse field Ising model can be used to investigate such phenomena. This is my work at the UNC of Maryland. Confinement effect is prominent in quantum chromodynamics. In the presence of a confinement potential, which is here, there's like bigger lines. Um, this confinement potential will increase as the particles separate. And this, like, and this uh, confinement potential happens between quarks and antiquarks. And then in the end, this, this like quarks and antiquarks will be bounded into hadronic particles. Like for example, here, the gray circle here is an example of meson. Although this quantum simulator experiment is not the exact quantum chromodynamics, it does give insight to the confinement effect. So how does this link to the Ising model then? So um, a couple of years ago, like 2017, like uh, Comos just really show that um, the transverse field Ising model has a confinement effect where the domain walls or quasi particle are confined to meson like bound state. Okay, that's a lot of words. So let me take a step back to explain these figures. Please ignore all the just like black lines for now. So in general, this is a time evolution of spin dynamics of individual particles. And let's focus on a region where, where it's called a domain wall, which is here. So a domain wall which is here, and that's what we call this like two anti-aligned spin that call anti-wall, uh, like um, domain wall quasi particle. And this is analogous to quark and anti-quark. So which is like this green and pink circle in this diagram. Uh, so, so with the, the presence of confining potential that increases with particle separation, this domain wall will be bounded, creating quasi-particles. This pair of bounded domain walls um, has a uh, effective mass and travel velocity. So this is analogous to a meson in 
uh, quantum chromodynamics. So this is a figure like uh, how we did the analogy. So next, uh, we should break down the Hamiltonian that Como study and just like evaluate uh, what's the effect of parts of the Hamiltonian will contribute to what phenomena. So in the nearest neighbor model, the this interaction plus the transverse B field will provides a kinetic energy that causes the doming walls to travel linearly along the dotted line. So if you ignore the this new B field, the formation the the spin, uh, the boost in the the information will propagate along these dotted lines. However, when you add this longitudinal B, B field, it will create a confining potential that pulls the domain walls away from this light, light cone. This restricts the spreading of the spin correlation and entanglement. So when we break down this longitudinal B field component, we can see that is similar to a confining potential. So this is a diagram that shows the confining potential between the, the domain walls here. So we can see that as the position increases, the confinement potential increases. And this is the main criteria of confinement where, where it's analogous to confinement in quantum chromodynamics. So, okay, and then what I said uh, works in this Hamiltonian, how, how about, about the long range Ising model that I mentioned earlier in the slide, which is this model. So uh, one of our collaborators, Fang Li Liu, uh, found out that long range interaction, which is this guy, has a confining potential too. It increases with particle separation. So the confining potentials in the uh, behave accordingly. So since it, the confining potential increases with spin separation, and we have fulfilled the first criteria for, for studying this confinement effect. So the first experiment probe that we like to observe is how does information are being like uh, spread. So the best, the one of the like clear way to see how information uh, spread is see how, how the center spin correlates to the neighboring spin, which is given by this formula. So uh, in this experiment, we observe the confinement effect with different initial states, which is X, X, and Z. So, so uh, X direction is the direction along the interaction direction, direction J, J here. So, um, and then these plots are the evolution of the connected correlation of this, fun this function uh, with respect to the center spins. So, so the top, of the, I mean, you can see these are the dynamics of the connected correlation with the top as experiment and the bottom as theory. The white lines serve as a reference line of the nearest neighbor model. So when you just like just have, uh, just have uh, this this Hamiltonian. So so uh, this Hamiltonian. Now I'll just look at the effect of a uh, confinement on correlation spreading in this system. When the initial state consists of low energy eigenstates, like this two, because this is like low, eigen, eigen, low energy eigenstate of the confinement Hamiltonian, the connected correlation is confined. So you can see that the when when this plot, this experiment is taken, the, the information of the screen barely spread to the neighboring space. And for for this, uh, the the second state, you can see that um, there's a slight spreading, but it's still confined. The information of the center spin is confined and does not propagate to the rest of the chain. So, as shown as these two examples, however, the, this this red column sh uh, shows the correlation dynamics when the initial state is initialized perpendicular to the interaction. So in this state, the state is far from the low energy region of the many body spectrum of the confinement Hamiltonian. Therefore, collision spreads super fast. So you can see in these diagrams, like the information from the, from the center ion just like spread quickly to the end. Uh, so spread quickly to the end and what we call this as a non-confined state. 
Next, we look at the effect of the confinement in the thermalization. The thermalization. So to, in order to look at this, we are going to like plot individual spin magnetization along their initialization axis. So this two will be uh, in the X direction and this will be measured along the Z direction. So you can see that in the, uh, and oh, sorry, let me take a step back. So you can see that there's a purple line here. The purple line is, is the calculated value of thermal expectation value with respect to the initial states. In the both confined states, the magnetic magnetization stay near to the initial value and do not approach the thermal expectation value. However, in the unconfined states, all local magnetization quickly relaxes to the thermal expectation value, which is way faster than the confined states. So this is an example of that, uh, the effect of confinement. So the next experiment that we're doing is like, we are interested to know um, beyond the confinement region. So we choose the average number of grooming walls after achieving a steady state. So, so this which is shown in this graph. So this graph is like um, the number of domain walls at a certain uh, magnetic field. So we chose a certain number of time when we see the skins like, like um, achieve a steady state. So this image is the state dependent for us and from the chain of 38 ions with different B field. Now I would like to point out that the red lines here is the experimental domain walls. In other words, this observer is a two body correlator normalized uh, by one over two to account the number of domain walls between neighboring spins. Uh, for the experiment, we increase the B field string from the system size 11 to 38 to find the number of domain walls at each B field, which is shown in this. So, so this is 11 spin, 21 spin, 38 spin, and then we increase the B field. So each point here is the average color of the uh, average, uh, average of the color region of the previous light, which is here. Um, the vertical lines here are the maximum number, uh, domain wall number experiment. Uh, the image from the last slide shows the domain walls and different shapes. So this is this is a data from, from the 38 ions. I will also like to note that the color lines here, the solid color lines here is, uh, are the numerical simulation. But with the general purpose classical computer, we cannot compute it for 31 and 38 ions from the data set because it takes a lot of time. And then for the resource that we have, we cannot do it. However, uh, I'm here, I'm still not claiming quantum advantage here. So, so, in the previous slide, I was saying that oh, uh, it's hard to predict um, the dynamics, but we can know the the number of domain wall at the high B field. So when the ions is start at the x axis, which is this, because the, because the way we do confinement experiment, we start at the low energy eigenstate, which is here. How when you apply a large B field, the state will process on the z axis, undergo a lama processing on the z axis. So when you do this uh, observer, so at the b last b field, this uh, this value will converge to 0.5, and this where the the number of domain walls will approach to this value, which is illustrated theoretically in this uh, horizontal dotted lines. So we plot the domain wall as density. Here and the way density here would be as uh, with B over J as 10 as our high B field. So, this is almost the end of my talk. Uh, before I end the presentation, these are the amazing collaborators that I work for to make this research possible, and specifically uh, the theoretical group from Alexey Goskov and, and uh, they, they just like. Uh, both groups uh, have a strong collaboration with result of this experimental work. So I'm here, but though this is the end of the talk and as an outload, so this is a flavor of quantum simulation. It can, can give us information about many body physics, non-equilibrium phase of matter, and then we can just like do Hamiltonian sequences and engineering. So the possibility is a lot. So before I end this talk, um, if we can make to the Q and A section, so if any additional questions, please email to my e email account or contact me while linking. 
Thank you.